Mm. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, April 23rd, I'm sorry, April 3rd, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me. I remember that song. And our guests today are um, George Brown, the two and a half from East Tennessee. We have John Richards from across the pond in England. And we have Dread Pirate Higgs from, I think it's Western Canada, isn't it? Ahoy, yes. Way over in the West Side. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you think you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. In Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. And we'll tell you how uh, we started our group and a little more about the group after the mid-show break. So stay tuned. Wombat, what's our topic today? We're going to be talking about some bad news for Anglicans, as well as a little bit of RESPECT. Speaking of, how can atheists get some of that respect? And I guess before we get into the full meat and potatoes of the conversation, we're going to throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. Arr! Quam be me, Captain, I shall not want. He maketh me to float in salt water. Mm. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth me bowl. He steereth me through straits of noodliness, for goodness sake. Mm. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking. For thou art with me, thy mast and thy rudder comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me in the presence of me mates. Thou quenchest my thirst with grog, my goblet runneth over. Truly, pasta and grog shall abide with me all the days of me life, and I shall dwell in the galley of the quab forever. Amen. <laughs> Guys, my, my fight against gray hairs has finally ended. I think I finally <laughs> found a gray hair inside my ear, and at that point, it's just like there's no hope turning back. The battle is lost. You're just accepting them as they come. There's nothing you can do. So well, you, There is something you can do. You know what I do? Oh, I, what's claim, that? Talk to me. I, I claim that I've dyed my head this color, and it's actually called extreme blonde. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's great. Hey, listen, I've heard that there's some bad news for the Anglican Church. Maybe you want to talk about that real quick, John, before we delve into our topic? Yeah, well, there's, there's quite a lot of bad news. In fact, if you watched last night's GAN... I sure do. News, How could you yeah, miss that? You would have seen a bit. There's more coming, too. It's, it's interesting what's coming up in the near future. But yes... 53% of the Brits over here have been shown to be non-believers, nuns, as you might call them, you know, not, wow. not the ladies in Wimples, but the, the N-O-N-E-S type of nuns. And uh, this, is, this is now a solid uh, statistic because it's, it's been tested, polled more than once now. So it's, it's really bad news, especially as the young are the ones who are mm-hmm. least engaged with religion. Right. Right down to, I think it's about 3% of them profess to be Anglican at the moment. So it's really bad news for the Archbishop of Canterbury and his mates. Cool. Hmm. Larry, uh, you're on mute, my friend. And it's not that it's just uh, 53% versus 47%. It's 53% non-believer versus a fractured re- belief systems on yeah, the right. other side. Yeah. Uh, you may say that um, uh, what is it? Islam uh, claims a large portion of the fractured percent, but it might be 10% yeah, versus not, uh, four, 53% non-believers. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, because the young have rejected religion they're going to get older and replace the other <laughs> echelons, of course you know yeah <clears throat> everyone knows wherever well, the uk go america tends to follow george uh, brown what's up well I, I just wanted to add that here in the bible belt where i live which is more um more bible beltish than where this radio program has originated 
with, uh, as I like to remind people, there are 167 official Baptist churches. Uh, the Episcopal Church happens to be the place where the political progressives are based in my town. So ironically, I find myself thinking, oh, this is not good news, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. right. well, if you want... that, that John is telling us, you know. <laughs> If you want the latest, latest news, this only came out today. A former Archbishop of Canterbury, not the current one, has come out saying that he would like to see the Russian Orthodox Christian Church drummed out of the brownies. Because that there is oh. a worldwide <laughs> club of Christians, Christian churches. And at the moment, the Russian Orthodox Church is a member of this worldwide assembly and he's starting a movement to get them kicked out because obviously they have supported putin they have not um come out against the horrible stuff that's going on in ukraine right now hmm. in fact they have it more or less indicated support for it sure sure yeah really terrible dread yeah just just going back to um the the first uh item there um in canada we just had our census last year and uh coming out in october of this year will be statistics related to uh religiosity right um as that question is only answered every second census or every 10 years so um the last in 2001 uh when that question was last asked um or 20 years i guess 20 years um it was 33% uh, were non-religious here in British Columbia, and I think 25% overall Canada. Oh. So it'll be interesting to see where the numbers lie uh, come October. You said you're I'm about 30%. Sure. That's about where we were too, looking it up just really quickly. But you know mm -hmm. what? I think the thing that's holding us back is that we still associate religion with moral character. And a lot of people will claim to be religious when in fact they don't know they've never even read the bible they don't even know right. but they'll yes. say it by default even yes. on a census right. just to appear or not to seem like a bad person and i feel yeah, like arthur, if, i'll go for it arthur, arthur c clark said that one of the greatest tragedies of mankind is that morality has been hijacked by re religion right. yeah yeah and i feel like there's so many more better characters that you can base your morality off of than the <laughs> christian god I yes. think oh yeah it unfortunately is almost the case that the christian devil is actually a better example in a lot of cases and in more moral. I would, why pass up the opportunity of a flying spaghetti monster when it's like right there for you like i see absolutely like, it's just so obvious uh oh, man. guys listen so one of the things i've also noted on these census is that it's really hard to get respect isn't it isn't it just with numbers and statistics and so i'm finding that you know, culturally, while it seems to be the case that a lot of people appeal to religion to seem like a good person, no one appeals to atheism, at least on the grand scale, to demonstrate their morality. And if you were to ask me one of the coolest ways to uh, demonstrate good character is by showing that I'm not following a, a, a strict dogma that has a lot of toxic attitudes against uh, different kinds of people and classism, right and uh, attitudes towards slavery that are not a, a, a anti in any sense. And for the most part, I feel like with my atheism, I have an opportunity to not believe in a script and let myself come to my own conclusions. And if you don't see me hurting people, and if you see me actually going out volunteering at our local animal shelter, uh, conducting myself well, trying to stay educated, taking care of my family, then you have a person who's not following a script in order to do that. And I feel like what my atheism enables me to do is demonstrate that I could be a good person without God. And I think that's one of the ways that I like to show or give atheism respect, because ultimately it is just not believing in a God, but I'm showing moral character even without that belief. And I think that's yes. the key mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. I wonder mm -hmm. how do you guys show respect or how do you think atheism can get more respect and move away from the idea that you're a good person only if you're a believer? I'll throw it up to Dredd first. Dredd, what do you think? Sure. Well, you know, I also, as a, as a practicing pastafarian, 
um, uh, you know, uh, people, I guess, assume in most respects that that is the same thing as being an atheist, mm. um, uh, which is fine. I, I don't really care, but um, it's, it's pretty much like you say is, uh, you know, doing, you know, being an honest person, doing good, uh, um, being a part of the community and always making sure you declare you're out, right? Right. Like, you know, letting people know. And then when they say, well, you know, because I've had people say, oh, well, you, uh, why do you hate God? Well, like, what, ha ha what happened to you? And, you know, so having those opportunities to uh, clarify exactly what it means to be an atheist um, is, you know, not having evidence of something is not the same as hating something, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about being clear about what it is and then just demonstrating yourself as a good person. Right. And you know, it doesn't have to be a huge ordeal to, to let someone know you're an atheist. Sometimes I've had people be like, Hey, you know, do you go to church? And I'll just say, well, I'm more of a Marvel person. And I think <laughs> it gets the point across pretty well too. But like, mm -hmm. I, I tend to do it as like uh, jovial and straightforward as possible so that they understand. And then if they want to have a long <clears throat> conversation, we can sit down and have a chat about it. Yeah. yeah. Larry, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, I raised my hand just as Dredd was making the point about being out coming out and that's the point i wanted to make is hmm. we need to come out of the closet we need to be out of the atheist closet uh not necessarily loud and proud but uh if somebody brings up their religion and asks your opinion tell them yeah you know um you don't have to say i'm an atheist you can say like i do i usually say i'm not i'm not a religious person okay. just let it go at that uh if they want to get into more detail i'm more than happy to <clears throat> But uh, I think if all of us came out, uh, it would the sheer numbers of it would would then imply that we're normal people, that we're your good neighbors and good coworkers, oh. and it would just go from there. Yeah, and, and for those of us that are uh, a little more inclined to be out, um, it would help other people who are maybe a little more shy or reluctant to, uh, right. just because they know they're in good company. Yeah, I don't think we need to make an announcement. Right. to those that are close and near near to us just engaging conversations when they come up and don't back down you're an adult you have the right to your own beliefs correct don't or lack let of people it. take that away from you right correct exactly. correct i think the biggest mistake we make with regard to power the biggest misconception is mm -hmm. that we give it up when we can easily just hold on to it and a lot of right. people give up their power so hold on to it stand fast and you don't have to do it in an aggressive manner when you let someone right. know you're an atheist mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. you, because you can be confident in your own place where you don't have to make it an argument and if it's right. a problem for them let it be a problem for them but let them know where you are and then let them have their problem that's not on you mm -hmm. john richards exactly. i'm going to throw this out on you how do you think atheists can get some i'm going to try to spell it again r e s s c s p n you gotta think of the song just think of the song oh r e s p e c t there you go such a great song, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I wouldn't want to pretend that all non-believers are perfect specimens of humanity. Right. Mm. But respect has to be, first of all, it has to be earned. And then it has to sort of withstand the hatred that's thrown at it <laughs> by other factions that want to own it for themselves. So I, I think that... Uh, the biggest thing we want to do to try and get a higher profile of respectability is to stop these other people from claiming that, you know, we, we are only atheists because we want to sin. That's not true. We are only atheists because we don't have any morals. That's not true. We're only atheists because we are purposeless. That's not true. Or that we, we hate are, God. Or we hate God. Exactly. All of that stuff is thrown at us illegally it's mm. it's simply not true and that's what we've got to try and resist so i'd like to point out that about i think it's around 95 percent of the inmates of american jails are christians <laughs> that's a good that's true that's very true <clears throat> larry would you like to uh, introduce yeah welcome electro live to the group um would you like to say a few words just as introduction i think everybody knows us everybody knows him too yeah mm -hmm. okay 
Uh, well, he's getting his audio set up. That's all. I yeah. But we're happy to have him engaged in the conversation. We're talking about how can atheists get respect. Listen, George Brown, as a as a New Yorker, as a, a, a Brooklynite, you know, respect is a big deal in the streets. Everybody needs to know where you're walking and, and where people are walking to. It's like a very big deal. But respect as far as religion goes, like, did you ever feel des- did you ever feel disrespected as a natural born organic atheist? You mean in New York? Yeah, in New York. And then compared to how your life is in Tennessee now that you're in the Bible Belt. Oh, wow. Um, you know, in, in New York growing up, I never gave it a moment's thought. Except wow. yeah. except um, uh, one day I was walking down Flatbush Avenue and I passed a man w- who had a little table full of little tiny Bibles. And he had a sign that said, free Bible to any Jew who promised to read it. I thought, hmm, what the hell? I <laughs> so I picked up a, a free Bible. And um, I mean, that was like my, my introduction to religion. Wow. In a way. How old were you? Yeah. Uh, I must have been a teenager, maybe okay. 12. Okay. Wow. Like that. Wow, wow, wow. At least that. And and so I I tried reading the Bible. I, you know, I thought maybe this will make me feel better about myself, right? Mm. So I I started trying. I could not read the thing. You know, I kept falling asleep. Same this here. has happened every time I try to read the Bible, I can't I can't focus on the thing. So I'll but about this, lack of respect, it just, yeah. it, it, it wasn't an issue, whereas... Um, Where you are now. Uh, I'll tell the story later, maybe, about okay. perform, when, I, when I performed in a, in, in a um, congregational church and had to put up with being badmouthed by the minister. So, Sure. You know, when I was reading the Bible or the way how I got my first Bible was I, my pastor from my, the church that we were visiting came to our school, unfortunately to indoctrinate a bunch of kids. My school just let sermons happen on campus. It's a thing, but I was in second grade and I saw him. I'm like, Hey, that's my pastor. I'm going to ask him if I can get baptized just randomly. And he took it super seriously. And then they did this whole baptismal thing, like the week, that same week. And they gave me a red Bible that had like a white Jesus on it. I remember he had like a nice nice little perfectly manicured mustache and stuff like that. And there were pictures inside. And it was all just like white, blonde people, blue eyed people, like on crosses and all that other stuff. It was just crazy. And I'm reading this thing and I'm, and in my head, I'm, I'm recognizing like, it seems to me like this God character really, really wants people to respect him or they'll, he'll hurt him because very first chapter, he drowns literally everybody. Uh, and, and like, he's just killing people left and right. And I was actually really scared. I was so scared that I was afraid to even go to the very last chapter. I remember how terrified I was. And there was a point in my head where I was like, um, the Bible is very scary. And I'd rather have someone tell me what's in it than read it myself. And then I thought that was not good. So I tried reading it and I got bored and it was just like, this is a really hard book to read through. Yeah. But, you know, I, I did stomach through it. I've read the Bible twice and both times were just the most displeasurable experience in my life. It was just the most random series of stories. And now that I look back at it, I can't believe that's what the holy books are. Anyway, Larry, what do you think? Well, it's just, a, it surprises me when people constantly say that God is love, when mm. if you read his book, you know, he, his most common interaction with people is killing them, right? Mm-hmm. Or giving them plagues, which kill them, it's right? Just one after another, after another. Even the guy the who murderous tried to save, tyrant, you know, the the guy who tried to save the the ark of the covenant from falling and hitting the ground, he killed him for touching it. Right. And I want to throw out this story as a counterbalance. My mom always told me like the best way to get respect from people is to earn it, or is like to work towards earning it, not through hurting them. Because I used to get in fights all the time. We used to be the only black family and I'd be the only black kid. And I get in fights all the time. And one day my mom said, Tyrone got in a fight with like three kids today. I'm going to go to his school and I'm going to bring cookies and I'm going to read stories to his class and I'm going to give out the cookies. And all the kids are going to see me give cookies and, and read a funny story. And she came on our lunch break as a secretary and did that on three occasions. And afterwards, nobody got angry with me anymore. No one got in fights with me because they all knew my mom and they knew my mom was a nice person. And I'm like, how did you do that? That was so easy. It's just like, Tyrone, you got to earn people's respect. Like, and I'm looking back at the Bible and I'm surprised I didn't really connect the two dots, but here's God being like, respect me, plagues, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
plagues, <laughs> this, this, that, famine, all that stuff. Where or noogies like, forever. A little uh, bit of cookies, read some good stories, and, and you know, show that you can be a worthwhile or valuable in your friendship with other yeah, people. Ty, 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 what's up? I'd like to suggest that you didn't earn that respect. You bought it. <laughs> I didn't pay for anything. <laughs> hey, what's up, George Brown? What's up? Muted. You're still uh, muted. He's still, he's still on mute. Should we um, uh, go out there and bake cookies and put them in boxes and you know, give out atheist, atheist, atheist cookies? cookies? Hey, atheist you cookies. mean that might work. <laughs> it, believe it or not, more cake cookies are atheists than you might imagine. Anyway, Electro Live. Are, is your audio good? Still on mute. Still on mute. We'll give him another try. So while, you, while you're thinking about that, hmm. the, the, the latest initiative that Atheism UK is looking at is providing, printing some stickers to go in the inside cover of a Bible, which says any resemblance to people living or dead in this mm. book <laughs> is entirely <laughs> coincidental. Yeah. Yeah. Her, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll say this too, in sciences, they're, okay, so this is always a hot topic, but in the idea that there are a lot of atheist scientists doesn't necessarily make atheism any better because there's also religious scientists too. But sure. really what's what's more important is that the, the scientific process is not dependent on any religious belief because you have Muslim scientists that can progress science. You have Christian science that can, uh, some Christian scientists that can put, uh, push forward science, but they're all doing it when they don't use the religion. Right. They're not and using in my the head, religion when they do that. Right. That's the distinguishing point. It's like when we make advances, it, yeah, maybe that person's religious, but he didn't use his religion or she didn't use a religion to progress science. They were using the scientific method. And I want to say that that should be indica indicative of what really is the best system to. to they they didn't do their science on Sunday. <laughs> imagine how much further we would have gone and if we saved all those sundays and actually used them for something useful yeah anyway uh how about we do an early break we can go into listener comments and then tackle some other top topics and try to get electro live in here for uh <laughs> electrolyte yeah uh stay tuned right there for the second <clears throat> half of the digital free thought radio hour and they're on wozo radio 103.9 lpfm right here in knoxville tennessee We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002, which puts us in our 20th year. ASK now has over a thousand members and we have weekly in-person meetings in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables. We're usually the loudest, happiest group there. We also have Tuesday evening Zoom ASK meetings. If you can't make it in person or you live outside of town and you'd like to join us, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com and we'll send you the link to join us. You can find us online in Facebook, meetup.com, or go to our website at knoxvilleatheist.org. Or just Google Knoxville Atheist. You'll find us that way. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Well, well, bet where you want to pick up? I got a nice comment from Dada's training room on one of our former episodes. This came from what is mysticism, which was uh, recorded a few weeks back. He asked, Ty, I still have a problem with how you're defining atheism. What you said basically is I define atheism as the lack of belief in a God. And that is what atheism is for me. But a theist could say I define God as the necessary being. And that is what God is for me. Can you see the problem? And I'm like, Here's my response. I don't really see a problem with that. I see it as two people defining what a word means to them. And that's totally fine. Uh, if someone said, I believe God is this, my, my immediate response wouldn't be, your definition is wrong because mine's different. Mine would be, well, why do you believe that? What method did you come to believe that's true or not? If you want to have that kind of conversation, we can totally have that. But I'm fine with the words that you choose to use based on your own terms when I ask you, how do you use them? 
that's basically all I mean when I ask for a definition. Like, how are you using that word and what does it mean to you? Because it's only through that understanding that we can talk at the same level and instead of forcing my dictionary on you and you forcing it on me. Any other thoughts on that? You guys feel good? If, if there uh, were specific ironclad rules for right. words, we wouldn't have usage councils. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> we want to have four versions of like major topic. Right. right. And there right. wouldn't be different dictionaries that have different definitions. Right. And they would I am reprinting every year with revised. Right. Exactly. Right. And I am happy with the idea of someone at least accepting the idea that atheism is a lack of belief in God's. But if they thought it was otherwise, I can at least explain where I'm coming from when right. I use that term. Yeah. And yeah. I would ask They're them, just... hey, use my words the way how I'm using them, because that's how I'm trying to communicate with you. And communication right. is always going to be a compromise and meeting based on the words that we use. Certainly. You know, I never understood why people um, have to force a definition on you. It's like it should be. It should be that they want to know what you actually believe. Like right. it doesn't do any good to kind of like say, no, no, no. What you really believe is this. Right. And then you're like, oh, okay. Thank you for that correction. I yeah. guess I am wrong. Thank you. We for wouldn't like it the other way. Out. Yeah. Because right? the other way wouldn't make a lot of sense for you to. <laughs> the way how I feel is it's to set it's to set their world narrative. And when you give them a word that doesn't suit their world narrative, then it's like, well, then I have to consider the fact that atheists may have a reasonable position like you've been told that you guys right. are unreasonable from the get-go i have to use this bad definition where i start questioning myself but it's still worth a conversation worth having and i think if they aren't willing to meet you on the terms of these are what i mean with the words that i'm using what kind of communication could oh, we possibly have frozen. otherwise oh i'm frozen so, My bad. it's like a chess game you know they're they're trying to force to a, a, a way to win you know they're right. trying to straw man you because they exactly. want to win an argument Electro Live, I did want to jump back with you. Um, we're talking about how atheists can get respect. What mm -hmm. things do you think atheists can do to get some R-E-S-E-S-E-S-E-M-P-N-C? -E 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 <laughs> All right, Aretha. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think um, kindness goes a long way. You know, just be fair. Well, I don't know. Kindness sounds kind of weird, but just be... I guess for me, I've, I, I can only speak to my experience. I, I noticed that if I'm just fair mm. and not argumentative and I'm just um, accepting what they tell, like you just said, you know, accept people on their own terms and have a reasonable discussion. Don't call them out of their name or don't bring out irrelevant points to try to win or score some kind of emotional you know, point in an right. argument or being petty. I think that goes a long way in winning respect. Yeah, I agree. Setting an example is, is truly what it is. And mm -hmm. when you were leaving the truth, when I say truth, I mean, Jehovah witnesses, did you, mm -hmm. did you employ that? Or did you find that it was difficult to get respect once you were out of the, uh, the kingdom? Uh, when I got out of the kingdom, um, yeah, they, I mean, obviously, the other people that I left, the witnesses didn't right. really respect that. They didn't mm. respect me. Even my ex-wife at the time, she didn't understand, you know, and I lost a lot of respect in her eyes because she thought, oh, you're just, you're not being a real Christian man. You know, you're right. kind of being weak right now and easily fooled. So I, I think I kind of lost a little respect from them, but I think I gained a lot of respect from my family and people who really cared about me on the other hand, wow. because I actually stood up for what I believed in at the time and still do Good that for you. this isn't the truth and I need to find it elsewhere. Good for you. Good for you. I know when my mom became a Jehovah witness, I found that as a great opportunity to let her know I was an atheist without any baggage. Cause we were both essentially leaving traditional Christianity at the same yes. time. And I was just like, perfect opportunity. <laughs> but still, I, I can tell you there was a moment where I was really scared because I knew about Jehovah's Witnesses as a Christian. And I was like, mom, don't do that. I'm going to lose so much respect. But then I also looked at the religion as a whole because of that. And was like, you know what? What am I doing here? You know, let me just get out too. So yeah, Larry, what's up? Well, I, I find it funny that he was saying that, um, that once he got out of his religion, the people who really cared for him uh, didn't have that much of a problem with it, but so that kind of not begs the question, but the it makes you want to ask what the converse was that the people in his religion didn't really care for him, right. and especially mm -hmm. once he left it, it was obvious. 
right mm -hmm. right right and i have no mm -hmm. problem getting disrespect from people who don't care about me it's the mm -hmm. people i care about right. that i only right. care about right george brown you had a comment uh may i tell a little story sure um uh, a number of years ago i was asked to perform in the in a congregational church um i have been an oboe player and i love playing bach and it was an opportunity to play Bach with an organ and a, and a singer, uh, an aria from a cantata, which glorifies, of course, God. And um, so I was performing. We did a very nice performance. And then the minister got into his sermon in which he badmouthed atheists. So there I was performing in his church, glorifying his God, and he was putting me down. And by the way, I didn't get paid for this, you know. So I, mm. I naturally felt rather insulted. And so I'm looking at this, you know, uh, we are the butt of constant propaganda, right. I yep. think. Yep. And, and so mm -hmm. I'm wondering, so, so that was a lead in for what I'm going to say. Um, do we need to start a propaganda campaign of our own to yeah. counter the hate speech that we're victimized with? Yeah. Only in the sense uh, of we need to be more open with who we are and right. what we mm -hmm. look like. And propaganda we... uh, is a loaded word which um, sends the message that you're not sending the truth. Correct. Right. And all we really have to do <laughs> is just be ourselves and uh, and live the life that we. Yeah. We right. Slow and steady wins the race. Right. Eh? Uh -huh. right. Yeah, okay. Honestly. Thank you for the correction. Thank you. Yeah. John Richards. Yeah. What, what we mustn't do is behave like them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if, they're, right. If, if they're bad mouthing us, we mustn't bad mouth them back. And, and right. it's a temptation. You know, I've right. very often been in an argument with uh, some theist and, and they've started it. You know, they've, they've been very rude about me and I've considered, well, okay, you've, you've opened the gates now you've permitted rudeness so i'll come back at you with some that, and really that's not helpful no. so in the exact same sense how if your goal is to get respect from people don't vic, don't don't target them with more you know virtual, <clears throat> uh, what's the right word mean <laughs> words mean candor virtual <laughs> but in, 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 here's another example of it if you don't want uh, a guy who's hosting a show to make jokes about your wife's hairstyle don't go up on the stage and slap them because now everyone's going to be making jokes about your wife's hairstyle. Like you got to be able to focus and think about things in the long term. It's very, very, you know, it's very reactionary to want to do that, but it looks what? better on you when you have a BBC channel and there's a pastor who's just speaking poison about atheists. And you're just like, who is this guy? Anyway, what else am I doing with my life? Right. Well, I can do that. Hey. I can do that if I'm listening in the car, of course. And sure. Sure. Nobody sure. Can hear me. But they, I can I can can I can put this in one sentence. Oh, don't we can't respect people who are disrespectful. Ooh, very very cool. Nice. Something Including I thought guys. about too. Something I noticed with a lot of um, religious people, uh, especially Abrahamic sort of religious people like Muslims, um, Christians, people like that, is they're constantly seem to be uh, trying to prove that they're intellectual, especially mm -hmm. the apologist type. Like they, they, right. they mm -hmm. want to, they right. want to appeal to a lot of deep philosophy and a lot of um, logical arguments and, and they're all, and they even have websites like reasonable faith and um, you know, really they're promoting this idea that, Hey, we're not stupid. at like you think we are, we're reasonable too. We're, smart educated. too mm -hmm. we're very educated and it seems mm -hmm. like it all and, and then the way that they have to sort of um like you know ty was saying you know they they straw man you sometimes and then other times they they try to uh uh you know say you're arrogant or you're you know you're speaking down to me by comparing it to fairies and comparing it to other imaginary sort of things which those sort of analogies are just to say you we both accept that this particular thing like a fairy or a leprechaun is something imaginary that's what we're doing when we make 
those sort of comparisons. That's how we look at your God. Like it's mm -hmm. imaginary. How do we tell the difference between your God and say a leprechaun? Like, are they the same thing or what? Um, and so that comes off as a little insecure and it, in, in, it seems like they're kind of needy and they'll even come out and say it. I need God. We need to be saved. We need, you know, so the, mm -hmm. it, it seems like if we were to do that, we would lose all kinds of respect. I think. Mm, I think so. Mm. Dread. Well, it's interesting. Uh, I, I really like where you were going with that. What I find too, is that people tend not to see their own ideas about the universe, uh, like as created by God or whatever. They don't see these things as ridiculous. They, they, they see these as perfectly reasonable explanations and then, uh, but compared to another person's religion that has some other magical aspects to it, they consider it absurd and ridiculous. And well, how could you believe something like that? And I get that a lot as a past Ethereum. Mm -hmm. How could you possibly believe that there's a flying spaghetti monster? That's absolutely crazy. Well, virgin birth, uh, resurrection, those things are perfectly normal. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, an ark that carries all the animals <laughs> in the world, like talking really snakes, yeah. talking snakes, all that makes yeah. sense like to you. And it world. does, right? People just don't, they don't see their own story as, uh, mm -hmm. as, as a, as a fiction. They, they see it as a, as reality. And, and they and, forget um, that miracles by definition are supposed to be kind of absurd and kind mm. of non-common you know right. that's the whole idea <laughs> like, right. yeah, yeah. if it, it wasn't then it faith. couldn't be right. right it couldn't it couldn't be a sign of god if it was just right. your normal everyday thing right right mm -hmm. right 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 you put bread mm -hmm. in a toaster and you got toast that's not a miracle right. anymore even if right. it, <laughs> it used to be before toasters yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> i did i did want to add on to what electrolyte was saying because there is a desire to look like an intellectual while in the other hand, dismissing comments from intellectuals only when they mm -hmm. disagree with the dogma of the proposed or the supposed intellectuals. So yeah. it's very much cherry picking, but also this you know, performance piece where they demonstrate, oh, I am so smart. We have a smart organization, but anyone who disagrees with us is wrong. And that's a terrible methodology to get to true things. Yeah. I'm also gonna say this too. Uh, education is a lot like a gym, right? You work hard at a gym to, to develop fitness. You work hard in education to get smart. And maybe it's not as obvious when you look at it, but the marker mm -hmm. for me that I see, the one that I try to look for to see someone who's effectively educated is humility. Because the more that I learned, the more I realized I didn't know. And right, the more right. I was humbled by the fact that there needs to be experts that study from these different areas that I need to rely on because they've spent some time getting their expertise from them. And I mm -hmm. can contribute with the area of expertise that I am in, which doesn't encompass an entire field of science, but does allow me to have some interesting points that I can offer in my particular perspective. And if we can work together with our own, you know, various levels of ignorance, we can get to something more progressive. And I feel like people who have that sort of attitude are the ones that I respect. And I feel like the same thing can be from religious groups if they were able to demonstrate some humility but unfortunately they have this giant super powerful god their best friend who knows how <laughs> everything right. works and does everything yeah. right for them and they know the yeah. answer for everything it's and, just and listens to their prayers <laughs> he it's sees least... you when you're sleeping he knows <laughs> when you're it's the least it's the least humble thing i've ever heard so mm -hmm, it's very mm -hmm. hard for me to get on that bandwagon uh dread and the, john, oh, john. the, the oh, other ahead, side john. of that coin is that if if you say anything which uh, challenges their belief system, they then say you're not humble because you're thinking yourself to be more important you're than God. Yeah, yeah. You hear, yeah, you hear that all bizarre. the time. It's so bizarre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so hard. bizarre. Anyway, dread. <laughs> so I, I think a, an important point is that, uh, you know, being aware of the fact that, that reason is not natural mm -hmm. to humans um it's a it's a skill uh, mm -hmm. just like critical thinking is Correct. it takes practice Correct. and this goes back to your point is that these things take practice it's a skill you have to learn it you have to practice it um because it doesn't come naturally and right. uh, i think uh there's there's a part of uh gaining some respect is demonstrating 
uh, critical thinking skills. I love and, it. And imparting that. Yeah. Just on top of that, before we go to George, it's a skill, but it's also not like riding a bike. You can get bad at reasoning if you don't yeah. do it yes. for a while. Yeah. You need to keep yeah. doing it. And in fact, oh, you have to check your biases. Right. You know, you have to check your own biases and, uh, you know, yeah, heuristics and all that good stuff. Uh -huh. Anyway, George. So, um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll forego the word propaganda, although I... I really think that we are living in an age of propaganda and it's very dangerous. Sure, sure, sure. Um, misinformation. Yeah, misinformation, you know, f of fake of people on Facebook and all this stuff. Um, uh, would it be advantageous for us to have some sort of a coordinated campaign of, um, you know, PR for ourselves? Yeah, my coordinated campaign is everybody come out as an atheist if you're an atheist. And, right. and then just continue living your life as normal and just right. let people know this is what an atheist looks like. This is what they're, we were firemen, we were doctors, we were nurses, we, you know, we're childcare laborers. Like we exist, we're here and we're not going to, you know, step aside when someone says, well, these are all Christians. Like this is a Christian nation. Like, no, 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 we're here too. And I guarantee you, similar to how it was in the UK, the more people who speak out, the more are encouraged to speak out as well. When right. I was at my last mm -hmm. job, I was one of the first people to just, you know, openly say I was an atheist because I was gung ho atheism back then. And I thought I was the only one, but it turned out that once I came out, I had people come to me separately and say, Hey, I'm also not religious too. I'm also atheist until I realized that like, it was about 70% of the people I was working with were also atheists. And I just felt so much more nicer knowing that I wasn't alone, but I didn't know that until I spoke up because I assumed yeah. everyone was Christian. Larry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing well, happened to me at work too. In a, in a country where it's quote predominantly Christian, if you don't come out and you don't um, file your claim as a Christian publicly, then you will be assumed to be Christian, Correct. even by other atheists. Mm -hmm. Your and silence hurts right. progress. Yes. Yeah. Right, up. exactly. And that's Maybe my PR should... campaign. Don't fall into yeah. silence. Maybe we should ban closets. <laughs> yeah. more windows less closets well it's know. interesting I, <laughs> I, I have a friend she's um an atheist and this person still has to go to church <laughs> and sure. it's like she feels triggered you know um every time listen to those sermons but what her fear is the family real right. deeply religious close-knit family mm -hmm. and i think she's been an atheist for like five years and still hasn't come out yet still and you know does all these videos and does all these um has her own show atheist show part of all these atheist communities um and hasn't been discovered yet to her surprise and i guess her thing is hey if they find me online doing this then that might be my out but i'm, a, I'm I'll not throw this i'm out. scared yeah. To come out. Mm -hmm. yeah if she has the opportunity to go to like a unitarian church she can still go mm -hmm. to church i don't have a problem with church i think it's like like I said before, it's basically mm -hmm. daycare for adults. But what I have a problem is with <laughs> religious indoctrination. And so like Unitarians actually roll a pretty good, you know, Sunday bash. Sunday assembly, mm -hmm. also very good. And those very church-like in its, in its proceedings. So you can find good churches, even <clears throat> if you're an atheist. And I don't mm -hmm. want to have the word associated with religion all the time. I think like Christians are really good at taking words like chariot lord it's like those words existed before you guys came around trust me mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. i'd rather have <laughs> nice things belong to just the nice thing bucket rather than Christ, be taken by the christian bucket and i think church let me ask you this indoctrination bad what's up let me ask a question um there's another guy his name is uh t jump another friend of mine he's yeah. trying to start an atheist church what do you guys think about that? They concept? already have them. And, yeah, I we mean, have Go them. for it. Yeah, they yeah. already exist. I'm totally cool. Sunday yeah. Assembly. Uh, yeah. If you look up Sunday Assembly, you'll see it started in England and, and pretty much went around the world. Yep. Uh, they, there's still a lot of them extant. I went yeah. to no, I, I, I want to jump in on this. I've wanted to say something for a couple of minutes. Um, uh, to me, the, the whole church thing feels artificial. And I... So, I mean, personally, I'm saying, mm -hmm. for me, it's it's irrelevant and um, a waste of energy. Well, but your definition is wrong. No, it's, that's, <laughs> that's why we don't say that. I, I just wanted to mention, too, I wanted to clear something up but that I may have given a misconception during our first half, which is that 
I never felt any hint of uh, persecution in any way in, in New York as, as being an atheist. But I, I, I do want to say that New York, in fact, is a majority religious city, most, mostly Roman Catholic. But I think that because of the great diversity of people, there's a lot of tolerance and a lot of curiosity about everybody else. So um, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. In an environment like that, it was just never a concern to me. Sure. I want to but there out. is a lot of religion. I mean, New York, Brooklyn, in fact, was once known as the city of churches. We have a mm. fear of change as people. And I think what happens is diversity tends to promote or propagate change. And so there's there are groups that are afraid of diversity because they know change comes with that. It's particularly if they have a very styad point of view. Mm -hmm. And it's it 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 is part and parcel with a metropolitan or metropolitan lifestyle where you have mm -hmm. a lot of different people coming in with a lot of different ideas that those people will tend to lose their styad dogmatic points of view and be more open to compromise, tolerance, change, just different groups of people and that will be more so than people who live in the rural areas of towns and stuff like that. Yeah. And so what I'm it's, hearing, it, yeah, yeah. Well, for, it, for, it's just, I mean, it's absolutely necessary to communicate hmm. is being able to acknowledge and, and basically put up with other people's ideas about the world. Because right. if you, if you can't, if you can't acknowledge the differences, there's no way, there's no, uh, there's no way to communicate. And what we have now is the easiest way to communicate more than we've ever had in our in, in any other time or any other generation. And I think that's the key. We don't mm -hmm. have to worry about travel anymore. We can now communicate with anyone around the world from a screen or from an yeah. earpiece or from our phones that we carry around with us all the time. And I but think this is almost done. I think this is the path that we're going to find ourselves on. At, and the path is religion dying because essentially we have the ability to exchange ideas faster than religion can keep up with and so religion however there's a flip there's a flip side to that almost done almost done <laughs> Raise your mm -hmm. hands. there's an idea that um the more we religion five factors to try to compensate or stick with these old dying ideas the more it can't keep up with the fast-paced nature of information exchange and so i'm happy that we have things like internet i'm happy that we have things like twitter TikTok, etc because they're keeping people connected in ways that I think religion is going to have a hard time trying to, to continue to separate us and, and to make us into separate tribes. Mm -hmm. George Brown, what's up? Uh, pardon me. I, I come from a subculture of interrupters. Yeah. Uh, so um, what I want to say is the flip side to what you just said, which is that on the internet, people will have a tendency to congregate with other people who have exactly the same beliefs that they do. And this, this will accelerate prejudice. So it's a double-edged sword, as I see it. I mean, from where I'm sitting, which is in a very small city out in the boonies, where um, you know fix, fixed thinking and fear of the other is a real big problem, I, I Echo think. Echo chambers. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it? I want to ask you, Dread Pirate, where you live in Grand Forks, mm -hmm. Um, is it the same in Canada? Well, in, in, in Grand Forks, we have a, a large Dukabor population. Uh, Dukabor is being a sect of uh, Russian uh, Christians. Um, and uh, so they, they tend to be, yeah, there's the, it's a very religious community here. Um, so, and very Christian. So, yeah, it, it can be tough. It can be tough. Sure. John Richards, it sounded like you had something to say. Yeah, yeah, well, I wanted to pick up on uh, what um, Electro Live said, Scott said, about uh, Tom Jump wanting to start an atheist church, because I was sort of on the fringes of the origin of the Assembly, Sunday Assembly organization, because uh, I attended a, a meeting, a sort of um, recruitment meeting with a bit of training thrown in, in which um, Sanderson Jones and Pippa Ed Evans, the founders, of the Sunday Assembly performed on stage and gave us an example of what we could do to replace church with this secular, non-sectarian service. And it was very good. And I didn't get involved in it because um, they 
the weakness that they had identified in their own construct was they went out initially and called themselves the atheist church and of course they hit up against the buffers of this miss non-appropriate stereotypical definition of atheism and that's how it became known as the sunday assembly to get away from that label that hateful mm. label which you know it's, it's been the tar has been thrown for such a mm. long time at non-believers even before christianity there was um gentiles you know there was infidels yeah. uh, and all sorts of other victims of the religious yeah mm. so so if tom jump wants to join uh, to start a, a branch of sunday assembly i suggest he gets in touch with sanderson jones because pippa F. evans has moved on Sure. She's um, mm. she's she's you know, now more mainstream comedian singer. One thing that um, T Jump um, and I heard him speak about this kind of extensively on one of his his uh, debates or whatever is that the thing about it is okay, we look at um, the good you know like um, churches like to brag about well you know if church and religion is bad then why is it that most of your charities, most of your, um, you know, humanitarian missions and things of that nature, they come from church, you know, the, 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 we don't see too many atheists getting out there trying to help the world, do we? But they sure do like to run down religion, which are the folks that are actually out there, boots on the ground, helping the poor and helping the sick and all of these type of things. And so T. Jump's point was, well, you know, there's a lot of problems with that number one because maybe there are atheists that help the poor and and mm -hmm. you know provide medicine for example like science you know they're just not the busy drawing really attention practical. to themselves exactly yeah, but yeah. to dispel that whole idea mm -hmm. maybe it would be cool to have an atheist church so to speak that well. provides like low-cost housing for people that yeah. um does help the um community um and then we can have that other part of it too, the social get together, the camaraderie, you know, the entertainment, everything that the churches provide as well. So you have two of those things to match what the religions are doing. And it's all in the name of normalizing atheism, you know. Well, maybe you need that in the US, but here, if you associate a charity with a religion, you're not going to make any money. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, a couple of weeks ago, we had what we call a telethon an evening devoted to raising funds for a good cause. It was called Comic Relief because it starred a lot of comedians who gave their skills free. And do you know what? Without a mention of any religion at all, they raised 42 million pounds that night. Wow, that's a lot of calories. That's, that's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dred, do you have any final words? Um, yeah. Uh... Yeah, great conversation. I, I wanted, just wanted to mention uh, that you can find my stuff on my YouTube channel at Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. I live stream this live at uh, 7 a.m. now. Nice. Um, thankfully, we're going to be uh, switching to this time permanently. Um, I'm also reading, I just read a book or did an audio book called Plato, Plato and a Platypus Walk into a Bar. Okay. And it's, uh, it's by Daniel Martin Klein. <laughs> And it's understanding philosophy through jokes. It's a really, really funny read, but there's a lot to learn from it. I want the it, citation. It, I want the. I want to read. It's book. awesome. Yeah, I want to read this. Book. And maybe uh, after ne next week, if I'm on, uh, I'll, I'll I'll share one of the jokes after the invocation. Fantastic. I want to throw out a quick final point. Um, the it is a double edged sword, sword with how information is distributed on the internet, where there's echo chambers. The thing is we tend to look for the information we want to find on the internet. And so how the internet is currently set up, it will send you mm -hmm. the things that you want to see and continue to show you ads for those things. So it's up to you, as we talked about, to recheck your biases, recheck where you're getting your information from, ask yourself why, and question everything. Because otherwise, mm -hmm. otherwise, you'll be asking to walk right into the bubble, cha uh, bubble uh, echo chamber for yourself. It's not the internet's fault. It's still on you to get properly educated effectively. Um, Larry, I think we're getting close to the end. What's up? I think I'm on the show. Uh, we've got one minute. We'll do it after the show. What's up, Larry? 
Well, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. My YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter 5 or Larry Rhodes, and you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can find help at recoveringfromreligion.org. Thank you for joining us on the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, you can find this show on Apple iTunes, Pocket Cast, Amazon, and podcasts everywhere. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Rami.